Autism is something you either have or don't have, but when you have it, you have it all over. Elvis Presley. Now while I appreciate the musical brilliance of the king of rock and roll, I think he may have underestimated the role that rhythm plays in the lives of all human listeners. Rhythm is all around us. It plays a role in our musical environment, whether it's doing the whip at a club with your friends, or listening to your favorite local band at a local bar. Um, you may have even experienced rhythm while you watched the Bellagio Fountain Show, as Celine Dion played across the speakers. However, rhythm plays a role in many other crucial aspects of human life. It plays a role in rocking a baby to sleep, the rhythmic way that we walk, or maybe even the rhythmic regularities that you're hearing in my speech right now. My research focuses on how we perceive rhythm in our auditory environment. Specifically, I am interested in what is going on in the brain while we perceive rhythm in our daily lives. An important aspect to musical rhythm is the beat. The beat is where you would likely find yourself clapping along to the music. Um, let's pretend like I played six tones for you guys. Uh, as represented by these blue dots, you could hear these six tones with one of two different beat patterns. You might hear two strong beats or three strong beats in the group of tones. If you heard two strong beats, it might sound something like one, two, three, four, five, six. If you heard three strong beats, it might sound something like one, two, three, four, five, six. These two beat patterns are very prevalent in musical pieces. So in my task, I ask my participants to listen to a piano player play a song with one of these two beat patterns and then judge whether or not a drummer is matching or not matching the beat. While participants do this rhythm task, I also record neural activity using continuous cortical EEG. This paradigm allows me to measure a uh, listener's perception of the beat during the rhythm task while simultaneously looking at whether or not the beat is present in the neural activity. I expect that when I look at the EEG data, I will see higher amplitudes of neural activity occurring at the same time that the beat is being perceived in the music. This is a crucial first step to us better understanding how our brains have rhythm and how this helps us perceive rhythm in our daily lives. Now, most of us are pretty good at perceiving rhythm in our daily lives. However, some individuals have a more difficult time with this. Children with language deficiencies, such as dyslexia or stuttering, have also been shown to have rhythm deficiencies. If we can measure these rhythm deficiencies using a paradigm like this, then we may, from a neural perspective, then we may be able to identify these at-risk children for these um, future language acquisition problems. This research could lead to one of the earliest indicators of children with language delays, thus allowing for earlier educational intervention techniques to help these children as they develop language while they're in school. Thank you.